Okay, so how do we do this? How are we going to solve this? Uh, the same thing with your simple ID ranking and your reheat ranking cycle. You start with the states that you have two known value, right? Because you need to read your property table, therefore you need two known value. Okay, so in this case, let's uh, try out. We start with state one first because you know that the pressure here is twenty kilopascal, and then and that your state one must be in uh, a saturated liquid form. Okay, so because given to you pressure, and you know that this is um, H one, which is a saturated liquid, so you need. To look for your all your property, the rest of your property in table E5. And we also are going to need the value of your specific volume, right? Because uh, state 1 to 2 and state 3 to 4 is actually your pump. So your there will be two pump inside your cycle. So you need to find uh, the first pump in between state 1 and 2. So for your state 2. Given that your pressure is equal to 0 0.4 megapascal, and that your uh, specific volume at 2 is equal to your specific volume at 1, because as I said, this is actually your pump, so you, your volume is about the same, okay, inlet and your outlet, because the function of your pump is just to increase uh, the pressure so that it will pump into your back into your boiler again. Right, but in this case for one and two, it will pump into your open feed water heater first. Okay, so V2 is equal to V1. And how are you going to find your work pump? There are two equations in finding your work pump, right? So, the first part, the first equation is that you can find your work pump by uh, this equation, which is your uh, flow actually, your pressure and your volume. And also, you can find your work pump by using this enthalpy value here. So, as you can see, you already have the value of H1 from your state 1. But what about your state 2 here? Right? We are not going to read your... Um, because this region is actually your uh, liquid phase. Right? This is your mixture region and this is your superheated region. We are not going to read from your uh, liquid table here. Okay, so we just make use of this equation in order for you to get your H2. So rearrange this, you will get H2 is equal to your H1 plus V1, P2 minus P1. And finally, you will get um, your H2 is equal to this value. Now we are going to solve for your state 3 and 4 and state 3 to 4 the device is actually uh, pumped so it's the, the, the way you solve for 3 and 4 is about the same how you solve for your state 1 and 2 alright so you make use of the same step as uh, in 1 and 2 so you will obtain your H3 equal to HF which is this value and your H4 obtained from this uh, work pump uh, relations. So let's move uh, to next state, which is uh, your state 5. Okay. So in your state 5, it's already given to you pressure and temperature, so you, you, may, you can uh, figure out that this is actually already in uh, superheated form. Okay. So given to you pressure is equal to 6 megapascal and that temperature at 5 is equal to 450 degrees C so you will need to check from your superheated table which is table A6 in order to find for your H5 and also not, not to forget you will need your S5 also uh, because this is an ideal regenerative so your S value at 5 is equal to your S6 and your S7 here. So finally you will obtain from this table S6 at this condition. Your enthalpy value is this much and your uh, entropy value is uh, this much. 
Now for your stitch 6, given to you P6 is equal to 0 0.4 megapascal and there this is an isentro uh, this is uh, isentropic process which is your S6 is equal to your S5 okay so how are you going to find your H6 here okay first of all you will need to check from your table E5 okay what is the condition of your S6 here? Is it in already in uh, mixed region or is it still in your superheated region? So you need to double check uh, your S6 first right? by checking on the SG. The SG in table E5 at 0 0.4 megapascal. If the SG value, if the SG value is less than your S6, so you need to uh, find the rest of your property in table superheated. If your SG is greater than your S6, then you will need to continue using your table E5. Alright, so you can see here from your property table of the table E5 here, okay. So 0 0.4 megapascal is equivalent to 400 kilopascal, and you can see the value of your SD here is 6.8955, right? Which is greater than your S6, meaning that um, the state at 6 here is still in a mixed region, it doesn't exceed yet your saturated uh, vapor line okay so how are you going to find your hx you are going to use the general equation that you have before which is y6 is equal to yf plus s6 yfg so y here stands for depends on what are you looking for is it for your h and your s right Alright, so it is confirmed that uh, your state 6 here in a mixture region, so you need to read all the value from table E5. So using this general equation, you will obtain your X6 here. And then, how are you going to get your H? is by using this general equation again, and plug in your S6 into this one. Okay. And finally, it will give you H6 is equal to uh, this value over here. Right. And remember, the HF, HFG, SF and SFG must be read from table E5 at P6 is equal to 0 0.4 megapascal or 400 kilopascal. So finally, is to find your state 7 over here, which is obviously state 7 at 20 kilopascal. Uh, the S7 must be equal to your S6 right and which is equal also to s5 so since uh, your s6 just now is in uh, mixture region already so s7 must be in uh, mixture region also so you are going to read uh, the value from your table e5 in order to find for your h7 so you are going to do the same as um, using this general equation which is y7 is equal to yf plus x7 yfg in order for you to obtain your x7 and then make use of that x7 to count for your h7 alright so once you plug in all the uh, all the value from table E5 at P20 kilopascal. So we'll, you will turn your X is equal to this value and your H is equal to this much, right? So next we are going to continue uh, with all the states value that we have, the enthalpy that we have, we are going to find for your network output per kilogram of steam flowing through the boiler and the thermal efficiency of the cycle. 
So in finding for your uh, work net, there are two ways in finding your work net. One, you can find from the work of your turbine minus with uh, the summation of your work pump. Or you can also make use of um, your Q in, right? Minus with your Q out. But uh, for your case of this uh, open field water heater, it is much easier to find your work net by using uh, this relation between your Q in, which is in your boiler in between state, state 5 and 4, and your Q out, which is in your condenser between state 7 and 1. And note, uh, note that from the beginning, we have um, this state where going out from your turbine, you are going to be uh, some of the portion are going into your open field water heater with the fraction of y right. with a fraction of y um, and so if this is this made up as 1 so the remaining that goes into your condenser will be 1 minus y. So there's another unknown value which is your y that you need to uh, figure out. So from the previous explanation, y can be obtained from h3 minus your h2 over h6 minus if your h2, which we have already derived at the beginning of this video. So when you plug in all the values into this equation so you will get the fraction y is 0 0.1462 here so what we can tell about 0 0.14 will goes into your open field water heater and the remaining will goes into your condenser here so when you do the uh, q out you need to consider the mass balance here so we will make use of this work net Q in minus Q out to find your uh, work net, right? So the Q in is in your boiler, which is in between state 5 and 4, and your Q out is between your condenser, which is 7 and 1. And you are going to consider how much fraction that goes into your condenser, right? So you plug in all the values, the finally you will get about this much, okay? So it's about um, the same with this answer here, probably um, not that accurate due to these uh, decimal uh, places. Okay. So finally, you need to find this thermocycle efficiency by using your work net over with your Q in, right? Which is the work net that you get is 0 1, 1016.54 and divide it with this h5 minus your h4 times 100 so finally you will get we get 37.75 percent which is about the range here okay so we have completed the chapter of your ranking cycle which is recall back you have a simple You have a simple and then with this simple you have ideal and actual and then we already have done the reheat where you have ideal and actual and finally is uh, this video where you try to solve for your regenerative ranking cycle but for this one, it is an ideal and we only cover for your open feed water heater. So I hope this video will help you and then we are going to try uh, one example in uh, your MOOC, right? Thank you.